are here tonight for our public hearing uh, about the construction related potential impacts on business revenues uh, as a result of the supplemental EIS that we've prepared. And um, uh, we're so welcome. Uh, the purpose of this hearing tonight is, is really the opportunity to provide public testimony and comments on the supplemental draft EIS. Um, and it is the supplemental draft EIS, so it is really focused on the construction related uh, potential impacts on the businesses and business revenues in the quarter. Um, just to give you some background on the process, uh, the supplemental draft EIS is actually published December 14th. Um, uh, there is a 45 day review and comment period. Uh, so comments tonight are going to be recorded. Uh, and uh, any responses that we receive in writing or written comments will also be recorded uh, and they will be provided in the supplemental final EIS. So all the information uh, given to us tonight will be uh, compiled and put together in that process. Uh, I think most everyone here knows we're talking about the Simple Quarter Light Rail Project, the green line. Uh, here's the uh, map that everyone I believe is familiar with showing the uh, station areas. Um, here's a little bit of a background on uh, the quarter um, construction project and the schedule. Uh, we are now 87% uh, done uh, with the construction on the project. We will begin uh, more systems work this next year or this year. How is that? Uh, we are in the process of, we began some systems work. We'll do a lot more of that this year in 2013. Uh, and we'll begin testing in 2013 of um, light rail vehicles. You'll see those um, uh, out on the corridor sometime later this year. And then next year in 2014, the line will open to the public uh, for revenue service. That much, sounds much better. <laughs> um, so these are the ground rules for tonight. If you haven't yet um, registered to speak, uh, please do that. There's a sign-up table right over there. Um, when your name is called, uh, please just state your name, uh, your address. If you are representing a business or a particular organization, please tell us that as well. Uh, if you're just here as an individual, we'd like you to keep your comments to three minutes. If you're representing an organization or an association of individuals, um, we will um, allow five minutes uh, for those individuals. Uh, and we'd like you to focus really uh, your comments on um, the CCLRT supplemental DIS content. And um, if uh, you don't want to speak tonight, uh, you can drop your comments in writing. Uh, we have a place uh, to leave those, or you can email those comments to us at the Met Council, and here is the uh, information. Um, we need to get these comments by January 30th uh, to be included in uh, the environmental process uh, uh, for our uh, federal funding partners. So, that's the ground rules, uh, and with that, uh, we will begin the conversation tonight. Uh, this, is, Because this is a public hearing, uh, we're listening. I'm listening to you. I'm not going to comment back or provide any responses to you, but I do want to thank you very much for coming, for taking the time uh, to provide comments to us. So the first person um, who has signed up to speak is Larry Peterson. Larry? Good evening, I'm Larry Peterson. I'm appearing on behalf of the University Avenue Betterman Association. Uh, I've had my business on University Avenue since 1986. Uh, I will address specifically the EIS, uh, both in terms of what it did not evaluate as well as what it did evaluate. It's pretty obvious from why we're here. Uh, the court specifically stated 
that the EA environmental assessment that was done last year was not adequate and the original EIS done in 2009 did not adequately evaluate the adverse impact on business revenues caused by construction. Our organization has been very active, as you know, uh, in the last two, three years. We've submitted a lot of information. Uh, I do want to just put on the record that uh, we submitted, as part of this deliberation, uh, our public comment that was delivered uh, last year as part of the EA process. <coughs> Under Appendix B of the current EIS, it refers to only Volume 1 of the EA, and it's Volumes 2 and 3 that contain our comments that were presented a year ago. I delivered uh, this same document to Ms. O'Brien in August of 2012. Um, so I request that the entire volumes one, two, and three of the EA that was done last year be a part of this record. I would like to just state uh, very succinctly that the EIS did not address the following topics. It does not indicate what efforts were done to uh, allow relocation funding for businesses who have been displaced by this project, uh, failure to evaluate uh, the use of relocation funding, um, we contend, uh, is a, um, indicates that the EIS then is totally inadequate. The Metropolitan Council and FTA did not actually do their own studies, and therefore it's our position that we have no baseline study of vacancies, we have no baseline study of sales tax collections, we have no baseline studies of business revenues, which could easily have been obtained and promulgated as part of the 2009 EIS. So by virtue of that, all the data that other organizations have generated have nothing to compare it to. And in fact, the uh, study by the Humphrey Institute is only 2010-2009 information as it relates to the metropolitan uh, community as a large. So there is no even comparison of apples to apples in that study regarding the corridor businesses compared to the greater metropolitan area. There's no follow-up on all the businesses that have left the avenue. I think there's approximately 70 that have left the avenue. Uh, the vacancy studies uh, showed uh, that some businesses have left. Uh, it seems to me that a thorough EIS would have pursued why those businesses left the avenue. There was no evaluation of the loss of the number of employees as a result of the loss of uh, business revenue on the avenue. There was no evaluation on the loss of wages, no ev evaluation of the loss of sales tax, or no evaluation of the loss of the actual employers themselves. There's no comparison done between the Central Corridor for 2011 and 2012, uh, comparing it to the greater metropolitan area in all the categories that I've indicated. There's no evaluation of the environmental justice issues, and one fa facet of environmental justice is the impact on environmental justice communities. Uh, in that regard, there's been no study on the adverse impact on minority businesses or low-income businesses, or low-income people who own businesses. I want to spend just a couple minutes on, on addressing um, the uh, studies themselves. As indicated in Appendix G, a 2009 study actually found that 60% of the Central Corridor businesses were very concerned about the impact this project would have on their business. So even in 2009, that data was available and could easily have been followed up then with those same businesses who were surveyed uh, at that time to determine what the impact has been since construction started. Appendix H is a anecdotal uh, study that our organization did and the IS uh, disregarded it, saying that it is not 
qualitative or competent. Well, when you read the in-depth evaluation of four businesses in that study, with the numerous sworn testimony of the businesses that were submitted a year ago that are in this document, uh, there's more than adequate evidence that there clearly has been uh, an adverse impact on businesses. Appendix 1, or excuse me, I, which is the Wilder Foundation study, mitigating business losses. Um, that study did not evaluate the adverse impact of businesses. So it really is irrelevant. Uh, all that uh, was intended to do was evaluate services that may have been provided uh, to mitigate losses. So I don't think that has any probative value in this case. EIS spends pages and pages on discussing uh, things that the judge never asked for. Um, and the end result is EIS then puts a positive spin on all this data to say that in the future, businesses will benefit. Uh, when you look at the executive summary, page three, it goes through uh, five different analyses that have absolutely nothing to do with the adverse impact on businesses. So to spend all this time and money evaluating uh, whether an alternative form of transportation does or does not benefit the Central Corridor is not only not what the judge ordered, but is irrelevant. The question is, what has been the impact on businesses today uh, as a result of the construction? Not what alternative transportation holds may have had. And then when you look at the analysis on uh, ES uh, 5 and 6, all these categories are evaluated, and the only one in which they found a negative impact was business revenues. And yet it is relegated to a mere discussion of one out of six categories. And yet the judge ordered that that be the only category that should be evaluated, is the impact on business revenues. Not all these other categories that are totally irrelevant to what the EIS was intended to address. Larry, you have one more minute. Okay, thank you. There is no question that um, this EIS study could be about five pages long. Uh, they concluded that there was a 25 to 30 percent impact on business revenues. The study could have stopped at that point, and that would have been a clear reflection of what the judge was looking for. The study supports that that is indeed the impact. In part, that they rely upon the grant or the loan program, uh, which only one-third of all the businesses ever received enough money to cover their losses, uh, and two-thirds had losses uh, in excess of the loan program or the loan amount. So the conclusion that there has been a 25 to 30 percent impact on business revenues due to construction, um, in my opinion, is what this study ought to say, and then we should talk about what are the, the options available to businesses. To spend all these pages talking about mitigation services that may or may not have addressed all other types of issues uh, just is not what the judge ordered. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how do you pr protect businesses, how do you assist businesses, uh, and to say that there's been no adverse impact on businesses, but then to turn around and spend pages talking about the $15 million that has been thrown at this project that is being called mitigation, I think is an insult to businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the next uh, speaker is uh, Ryan Wilson. Hello, my name is Ryan Wilson. Um, I own the UPS store and University in Hamlin. I'm speaking on behalf of my store and the UPS store network as a whole nationwide. Um, I've had that store for 13 years. I'm on the corner of University and Hamlin. 
as some of you know, that was the high, most highly impacted area of this project. Um, we were sold this project back in 2008, 9, and 10 as being something that was going to be a little bit impactful, but something that should be sustainable. I mean, at 2.5%, as a business owner, I can, I can plan ahead for 2.5%, and we did. Um, unfortunately, we took over an 8% loss. Um, with that being said, in 2012, we took another 5% loss. That's compounding losses now. I didn't see anything in the environmental impact study on compounding losses, nor did I see anything in the environmental impact study comparing this thing to having two complete years of impact. We've had two complete full years of impact. They actually, in 2012, closed our intersection for 42 consecutive days. 21 days on the north, 21 days on the south. We found this out three days before that took place. Um, the information for 2012 was absolutely horrible. That we, the business, I had no option of planning. You can talk to any business owner around the country and ask them what they thought of my business plan for 2012, and then to find out just before that my plan was shot because we're gonna have two full years of construction impact. One of the reasons we had that impact was track storage. For some reason, somewhere along the project, we were promised that that wouldn't happen. We ended up storing 1,040 feet of track in front of our store for two years. It was impossible for them to finish that project in 2011 with that track stored there. But throughout the whole process, they told us, no, you'll be impacted for 150 days. Well, we exceeded that 150 days. When asked what the punitive damage was for exceeding the 150 days, well, we come to find out there wasn't. So that was thrown out there as a sales tool to say, you know what, we won't impact your businesses that long. We'll get out in and out of there. In my situation, it was almost 300 days of impact. Um, I, th I thank my grandfather for teaching me financial values because that's because we're still here and we've been able to survive it because of, unfortunately, not the help from the Metropolitan Council nor the City of St. Paul. The fund, the $4 million, as Larry stated, only about $2 million of that has been used so far. Okay? That money is sitting there. $2.5 million of that came from the Metropolitan Council. $500,000 came from the White World Collective, the fund, and a million dollars from the city of St. Paul. This, the businesses need that money now. It shouldn't have been thought about at the end of the year, and maybe we should see what we're going to do with it. There should have been a plan in place for that money, because the businesses do need that money now. Um, if you can help in that capacity, please do. Um, UPS has been really diligent on comparing my numbers in comparison to what the other stores have done in the Twin Cities. Our network nationwide has had an 8% growth in 2011, and the state of Minnesota also had a comparative 8% growth. I've taken an 8% loss in that time with a collective 16% swing. Um, I've already turned in my numbers to the project, so you guys do have those, so you can see the actual dollar amounts. But when we're talking 16% versus 2.5, business planners across the country would cringe, okay? You folks are very talented, very intelligent folks. You have the ability to make studies like this and do it right. How you picked Yellowstone National Park to compare what University Avenue is is beyond me. I apologize, Catherine. I don't know if you're the one that was in charge of doing that, but the four studies that were used don't come anything close to what University Avenue was, okay? And why they didn't use Seattle as a model is beyond me. Um, in Seattle, they gave upwards to $150,000 per business to help them survive this project. The Metropolitan Council in the City of St. Paul gave us $20,000. Just a point of fact on that, over the next four years of this project, I'm going to pay $24,000 in just property taxes alone. So that $20,000 really doesn't help. Yeah, yeah, one more minute. Outstanding. Um, with that, for an environmental impact, we're now going to be assessed $54 per linear foot each business along University Avenue. That's probably an impact that wasn't well known, but that's a, a lot of businesses are now just finding this out for the first time, and that's another big insult. Uh, when the Metropolitan Council takes out a curb, it's their responsibility to replace it. Same as a light pole, same as a tree. Unfortunately, now we're getting $54 per linear foot in assessments because of this project. Um, impact to the community and why the businesses are going slow? You only have to go as far as look at a 17.7% unemployment rate for blacks in the Twin Cities. That's the highest in this country right now, and I can't make this up. Okay? We have 3,000 plus shovel-ready jobs on this project. 
And I, for us to have the highest unemployment for blacks in the United States right now is insulting. It's at 17.7%. I can't make that up. Um, if this is a model of what light rail is supposed to look like in the future, I'm fearful. Right now, where I stand, I will tell our other stores, if they see a light rail coming towards them, get out of town. Okay? This project wasn't done well. It might be a model for fixing things in the future, but for right now, you have a broken system on University Avenue. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is um, Tim Holden. This evening, I, I came this morning and I wasn't able to speak. I came at 8:15, and they had adjourned the meeting at 8:15. Um, it seems like we've lost a lot of the people that had uh, been involved in coming in and talking, due to the fact that they're out of business. We've lost over 70 businesses, and probably even more than that, that people don't know uh, that haven't responded uh, to the questionnaires. But uh, we've got articles in the paper that are pretty substantial. And when we take a look at things like this, this is very, very to the point. How can this happen? The wonderful mayor of St. Paul, Chris Coleman, said that not one business would fail as a result of the light rail. I can't attribute every one of these businesses failing to the light rail because the times are tough. But I'm going to tell you, not, not difficult times haven't caused all seven of these to go out of business. The mayor should be here. I don't see him here. It's unfortunate. I've called him. Uh, I've, I've asked numerous times for responses on loans. We requested loans funding. Um, we were given funding on one of our businesses. I own two businesses. I've been on the avenue for 15 years. Uh, I've got a tenant. We've lowered the rents tremendously on our, on our tenant. Um, it's just been terrible. I can't explain it any differently. This has been the one of the worst experiences I've had. And as a small business owner, uh, you would think that the elected officials in the city would really be standing behind us. Well, they're not. They're more interested in baseball stadiums. $55 million baseball stadiums. It's sad. Priorities. We really need to address our priorities. Um, I put together a little packet of information I was involved in this back in March of 2011. That was part one. I put together part two. We put a little note in here. My lost revenues are in excess of $400,000. My lost revenues in excess of $400,000. I've got my taxes done. I can show them to you. I can verify those documents. The project was Underplanned as far as I'm concerned. You didn't consider the small businesses. Not at all. You didn't care. And maybe that was the plan. We get rid of these small businesses and we put in some new stuff. We bring in the big boxes. The people with the deep pockets. Maybe that was the plan. I don't know. Yeah. I just hope that at some point, um, you know, when we do find some officials and, you know, they'll come and talk, they'll, they'll, They'll take a look at this, and I hope that Judge Donovan Frank actually will review some of the documentation that Larry Peterson has put together, um, that Ryan has put together, uh, some of my facts, and just look at the facts. 70 businesses closed. This is not insignificant. This is extremely, extremely significant. For anybody to look at themselves in the mirror and say that this is insignificant, they should be appalled and ashamed of themselves. Thank you for your time, and hopefully this gets done sooner than later. Thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, speaker is, uh, I believe, um, Carlson. Is that correct? Yes. Sorry, the space was very small. To write. Hello. Hello. I'm uh, Steve Carlson. I work in this area as the managing editor uh, of the. Uh, of the Asian American Press and Asian Business and Community News, and as a consultant helping to develop re refugee and immigrant-owned businesses on University Avenue. 
Uh, we have worked with DFL mayors, governors, federal SBA officials, et cetera, to make University Avenue the great resource it had become before this destructive project began. We have worked with the Minority Media Coalition, representing Asian Americans, Hispanics, American Indians, and African Americans. We built this. Uh, my views on the Central Corridor are well known since I have run for Congress in the 4th Congressional District in both 2010 and 2012 and made a big deal of this. In 2012, I attended a Lao Family Forum in which I spoke for the need to mitigate the damages. And Sandy Pappas admitted that mistakes were made because this was the biggest transportation project they'd ever done and they could not get their mind around it. Uh, she suggested soliciting ideas to pay off those who were immediately damaged. But these are long-term and widespread damages that we need to mitigate. Now, I have a positive plan. I want the city to change the plan. I want the city to get a federal waiver. I call on the mayor, the governor, and the members of Congress to work to get a plan that benefits and does not destroy St. Paul and its businesses and communities. Well, at the Asian American Press, we covered an earlier attempt to build this train up a University Avenue, and we worked with the Midway Chamber of Commerce to oppose it and to stop it. With the stimulus bill in 2009, Betty McCollum was able to get stimulus dollars directed to this dangerous, destructive process by saying the Union Depot project was shovel-ready. Supposedly, a high-speed rail was supposed to come to St. Paul from Milwaukee and Chicago, and that is not happening. The federal court should take note that the adverse impact can be mitigated as follows. There are three aspects that should be and can be mitigated and the federal waiver granted to accomplish. First, the community faces the danger of a terribly busy and dangerous street which cannot be crossed safely by children, seniors, and the disabled, or basically anybody. In fact, you can get killed. Right now, there are chain links all along and uh, it, and limited places to cross if you are taking a bus to a business on the other side of the street, for instance, Walmart. Businesses obviously cannot deal with this and will leave and have left. The costs on the taxpayers and businesses throughout the region are manifest. As an example, when St. Paul put in a bid for the Viking Stadium in Arden Hills, even though the Vikings themselves fought for it, it was impossible because of Central Corridor. So many fans of Vikings fans lived to the south that they could not drive across University Avenue to get to Arden Hills to attend the game. It was obvious that 280 and 35W could not handle all the traffic. Now, if you go to the 46th Street Station on the Hiawatha Line, Try to approach from Ford Park where you will see the untenable uh, conditions. Now this will cost Minnesotans millions of dollars in operating costs if, if you uh, don't mitigate it as I am suggesting. And the reason is from uh, Raymond to Rice, uh, it's going to be very slow, a lot of traffic, and there's not going to be enough uh, ridership. And we all know that this is our uh, operating costs are carried by taxpayer dollars. Now, I have recommended on my website, Steve Carlson for Congress 2010.com, a solution that we simply do not operate the trains from about Raymond up to Rice Street. We can make money in St. Paul and Minneapolis and in the university area with a train. But in between Raymond and Rice, there will be a drag and a terrible blockage of traffic. We have built it, but we don't have to lose money, destroy businesses and communities to operate it according to the current plans uh, with, with all these stops along University Avenue. I will submit detailed information on my plan to this Mr. panel. Mr. Carlson, you have one more minute. Oh, great. That's, that's perfect. Thank you. I will submit detailed information on my plan to this panel and to the court. And I hope that not only you and the federal uh, court, but leaders in St. Paul and Washington and the Metropolitan Council will adopt this. I wrote the 16 to study available parking for park and ride around Rice Street. I understand there is a state leased land for parking, a lot of it. If we build a park and ride there and in Lower Town, we can build a great downtown with successful retail businesses and entertainment to add to the cultural assets and government operations. We can show America how to build a great modern capital city. And I ask you to join me to do so. Um, thank you very, thank you very so, much. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next uh, speaker is Winston. Diana. I want a parking lot and a farm. Hold on, I'm sorry, I can't understand. 
I want a packet locked in the pump. And I you need the fifty. I want a packing lock and uh, I live uh, in the in uh, I want uh, in the farm. Oh, she say that um, she is the uh, uh, what your name you tell Diana. Me? Diana. She uh, live on University Avenue and she. Uh, did not have access to um, uh, go, go to her house, like no parking space, uh, no parking street, like it used to be, right? Yeah. And um, my name is Winston Wynn. I was here this morning too, but I come a little bit by 10 minutes late, like that uh, gentleman, so I'm not uh, know from the beginning. Um, I have been in a meeting with the library for at least 99% uh, uh, of the time that they have uh, organized. Um, and I always give suggestion about, uh, give room for us too, room, room for small business and for residents. But I see the library, they don't have a good technique, they don't build a uh, a good uh, road, uh, they spend too much, they uh, take too much space. And uh, uh, the resident and the business on University Avenue don't know uh, nothing about and uh, don't have anything that they give to us because uh, we used to have the one land parking on the street parking, but now none. And uh, the library saved the space for their flower. They should not do that. They should save that uh, play for parking for resident and business. Um, and um, I want that what we have an idea, a suggestion they should take, but they not, not never take our suggestion. Like I told them, they should be one way from Minneapolis to St. Paul and go back different way, like on 7th Street, uh, I-94, uh, wherever. So they don't bother us, they don't take um, uh, space, and uh, the future there will be more problem. Maybe when you have uh, the train running, you will have a lot of problem, like traffic uh, jam, uh, traffic accident, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things. Like right now, we're in the front of our house. There's snow uh, piled up, and they, uh, you know, light rail should have, uh, you know, responsibility to clear out sidewalk too, but they never did. And um, I am uh, the U.S. Uh, servant for many years in Vietnam and in the United States, and I work for. Uh, Hennepin County, Ramsey County, Public Defender, and I support for the government for over 30 years. Um, now I'm over 70, they don't give me uh, the room to walk and, you know, like, uh, uh, no parking on my side, walk, and I request before they build. Uh, but they ignore it, they didn't look like they don't hear me. Uh, I give you, the speech tonight, I hope you will give this to whoever have uh, authority to look uh, through whatever the people need. Because you are the live rail, just like an alien. You not belong here. You not belong in University Avenue. But you butt in, then we uh, take our everything from us, from uh, parking, from traffic, and, we have a hard time for all, over a year. Um, we see a lot of people almost get accident because they don't know one way, two way, they ride the wrong way. There is no good of a signal. So you have to have the people who have the, a high engineer thing to look through the road and to see what's wrong and what we should do. But I need parking. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, the, the next speaker is on true. I may not have said that correctly. A N A N H T R I U H. Sorry, please come forward and tell me correctly. Name is Anne Trin. A N A and T R I N H. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And I. The, uh, mic, if you could speak into the microphone. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. What the interpreter, you should do that for us. What you do here. Good job. Go up. And I have. I uh, didn't do the work. Beauty shop at the. 397 University over 20 years. And like we have the resident upstairs and we do business downstairs. And in a point right now, I think we lost a customer because no parking in front and in the back. It's just a few parking. And I heard most of my customers complain, say, hard to come in to your shop because my shop in the middle, not the corner, not this way, not this way, in the middle. That's right. Uh, first, just thought, I don't think they uh, lose a lot. But right now, when they done, I know they have exit to go in. That's why we do a lot, the customer. And right now, my husband cannot work, and I am cannot work too, but only my daughter can work, but I don't think she cannot be so wide with no parking, that's right. And uh, at the beginning, I'm all the time attend at the meeting, and I fight with the no parking, fight with the no light real, but no choice. Yeah. And right now, they uh, uh, borrow like, uh, the construction too heavy to dig the ground and borrow my uh, sewer, my uh, what, pot or something, the water, yeah. And when I complain, when they come down, they deny, they say, it's not about construction, I don't know. But it's it does, because all the way, the path is straight like that, and then connect to the wall, and when the wall, Sinking and my pop in bed. That's why right. they spread the water all over my basement. Yeah, and they still deny about that. I think, yeah, and snow. And when less snow, and they have a little bit space to put up the snow. But when snow a lot, and I don't know where I pack the snow, because I cannot put the snow go to on the street, and I cannot put the snow at the sidewalk. That I'm in the middle, I, yeah, I have no choice. That I need help about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. The next uh, speaker is. Um, Looks like the last name is Pompkin. 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 Sorry. Julian. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Juhi. Juhi Pompkin. Um, I work with the Asian Economic Development Association, um, and uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I, want, I wanted to just talk, give some comments about the uh, SEES, IS, obviously, because that's why we're here. Uh, but I wanted to start out by 
talking about the limitations that I found to the study. Um, I, I felt very strongly that um, there are many challenges to offering comments to it because it was challenging to read because there weren't very many um, solid findings to it to respond to. Um, some limitations I saw was a lack of citations. So where you did offer some evaluative um, positions on uh, the outcomes of the construction on businesses, there were no citations to understand, well, where did you, uh, where did this um, finding come from? So you felt that the, the uh, closure of just three businesses net on the avenue was a positive outcome. Um, where's the citation for, for that? And then what is the criteria by which you decided it was a positive? Because from my um, perspective, a positive would mean that it uh, offered a positive outcome and not uh, and strengthen the avenue rather than took away from the avenue or remain stagnant. So I would say that that would minimally be a neutral um, outcome. Additionally, with, with the same with the vacancy rates, you found that to also to be sta as a stable rate to be positive. And again, I would say that that would be neutral because there wasn't necessarily an inc uh, a decrease in vacancy rates. Um, also, in the towards the Towards the end of the findings, when you actually evaluate the, the various alternatives, you found that the impact on business revenue was actually moderate, which is different than what you put earlier in your findings, where you said it was a negative impact. So, uh, so I found that to be inconsistent, um, and, and obviously, from my perspective, with an average of 25 to 30 percent um, impact, but that's not moderate at all. Additionally, I felt that there were numerous assumptions being made within the, uh, the report. Um, most specifically, the assumption that non-retail businesses uh, had less of an impact. Um, this morning, Chair Hay heard um, uh, a health uh, organization um, state that they lost 30% of their income also during the construction. And similarly, uh, salons and other service type of organ, uh, businesses also were hit hard. And um, the challenge for them is that people have a lot of selection, and so if they find another care provider or, uh, or a beautician, that they're not likely to come back, or not likely to come back as easily as a restaurant that may, may have been somebody's favorite to go back to. Also, most of the data reflects um, the impact on businesses in year one, um, mostly because year two data wasn't uh, very available. Um, so the Wilder study that you cite and use um, is from year one, as well as the majority of the, the small business loans were year one loans. There were some year two loans in there. Um, we didn't feel that there was real use of the uh, qualitative data that uh, Little Mekong or Asian Economic Development Association submitted to influence any of the findings either. Um, we also found that the study did not take into account additional expenses that businesses experienced, such as having to pay for signage, advertising, or promotional campaigns where they offer discounts, uh, property damage, um, and leasing of additional parking spaces. And, uh, and I think also Larry touched on this, but we also found that there was a real lack of uh, attention to the, the equity and, and environmental justice piece. Um, I think that that was the, the foundation upon the lawsuit, um, of, of the lawsuit, and there was little critical analysis to take a look at how does it affect low-income businesses or minority businesses as opposed to other uh, businesses. So... Uh, I also, uh, so I just wanted to also say that um, surprisingly, I think that the people here tonight are the optimists, um, despite what you hear, uh, because we're here because we think we can make a difference, right? I did a lot of outreach to businesses in our district, our Little Mekong district, to try to get people to come here because we know that their voices weren't necessarily um, put into the study, and we wanted you to hear them, but most of the businesses didn't see a point to it. You know, and it's not because it's the end of the project. It's partly because it's the end of the project, and they didn't see anything else that could happen. 
but it's also because um, they have tried to get help throughout the construction period. They've used the hotline. They worked with um, the, the options that were out there for property damage issues or to try to rectify parking issues, and they didn't feel that they got helped throughout the summer, and so they don't, so they don't see how anything else could help them at this point. Um, so, you know, I think it's really sad that uh, oftentimes people come together under hardship and it uni unites people, but this has really um, drastically disenfranchised our community. There is very little faith that um, the systems that are there to help them are going to help them and be there for them, and so they feel very much on their own. And um, I think yeah, that that minute. sure, and I think that that is the um, the harshest uh, reality and impact um, of the the construction project for our communities. So, thank you. Thank you. The uh, next uh, person who has signed up is Keith Schweiger. Hi, my name is Keith Schweiger. I own I owned 1161 University Avenue, 1169 Un University Avenue, and then in 2006 I bought the Whitaker Buick used car lot, 1205, 1207, I think, and 1217 are the addresses of it. Um, I've been on the avenue since 1989. I've had a successful car wash there from 1989, Midway Car Wash. In early 90s, I bought, uh, or I converted one of the buildings into a used car lot that I operated there from the early 90s. And then in 06, I bought Whitaker's and expanded my automobile business. When the light rail construction started, I have, since February when they started digging, I have closed my car wash down. I have closed my Whitaker Buick car lot down, and I was forced to sell my original lot that I started uh, to Enterprise Rent-A-Car at a reduced rate, uh, or a reduced value, uh, because I had cash flow problems. Um, I have, I will not be opening up the car wash again because the business has gone there. It won't come back. The way the construction is designed, you can't access the car wash or exit it like you used to be able to. And I was also, um, the light rail also came along and took the first 10 feet of uh, the Whitaker Buick lot, which in the car business, your curb appeal is very important. They took that to store construction material and equipment. Uh, they said, well, you can operate your business behind us. Well, how are you going to sell cars when you can't see them? So I ended up shutting both of those businesses down. Um, in order to survive, I went out and bought another car lot, which I jumped into debt at 60 years old for another million five, which I didn't want to do. But in order to survive and keep going, I had to do that. Um, as I said, I had to sell that property to Enterprise at a reduced rate, and my car wash is inoperable. It, I mean, it's operable, but it's not worth uh, opening because the access is there. Seven years ago, I spent 300000 remodeling that, which is gone, in my opinion. And uh, the Whitaker lot, I'm, I, you know, I've been paying taxes and insurance and all the upkeep on these properties and unable to use them. And I've been there since 89. And it's just uh, ironic to me that they can come in here and do these projects and then take businesses that have been there for many years and just effectively put them out of business. So I, I you know, I kind of have a question. What good is this doing? What are, what are you guys, what's the intentions here? What's supposed to come out of this? I'm sorry that because this is a, a public hearing to take public testimony tonight, okay. it's really not a dialogue, so okay. I'm not responding to comments. All right. But thank you very much yep. for coming. You to bet. Speaking. Thank you. I do not have any other people who have signed up. Uh, if there is anyone else who would like to come and address us, um, you would have three minutes. Just please come forward. 
indicate your name. If there is not anyone who would like to come forward, um, I'm going to close the public hearing. Just if someone wants to come forward, raise your hand, let me know. I, I don't see anyone uh, raising their hand or coming forward. Um, so I'm going to close the public comment period. Uh, if you have additional comments that you want to put forward in writing, uh, please do that. Uh, you can uh, send them uh, to us at the project office or you can email them to them at, to, to us at this address. Uh, thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you.